Uh, we receive uh, all of our family members saved tonight uh, in the name of Jesus. And, and Lord, we, we receive your blood and, and what you did on the cross for us in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 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 Hallelujah. I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. The title of the message tonight is First Love. You know, as we look at what the goal of these uh, sessions are, uh, they're not knowledge because knowledge puffs up. But uh, from 1 Timothy 1.5, it says the goal of instruction is love, that we love. Oh, amen. <clears throat> that we love Jesus Christ and we love one another. And, and uh, so the message tonight uh, comes from uh, the Ephesians church about first mm -hmm. love and in ephesians um in the book of ephesians uh chapter one i, I believe it's about verse 16 he said uh, uh paul was writing this is a letter to the ephesians he said wherefore i heard of your faith in the lord jesus and love unto all the saints so they had a reputation <clears throat> this uh, congregation in ephesus had a con had a reputation of love of all the saints, and that's wonderful to, that they they were loving. And then uh, a few years later, there's another letter written to the same group of people. Mm -hmm. uh, there may be some changes in the people, but I'm sure some of them were the same. And and it says uh, it was a letter from Jesus directly from Jesus to the uh, church at Ephesus. And he said, I know your works, I know your labor, I know your perseverance, I, I know that you hate evil. So these people weren't sinners. Uh, they hated evil, and they, uh, they judged the difference between right and wrong, and the people that were uh, uh, untruthful, un, uh, then they, they took care of it. They, they brought discipline because mm -hmm. they hated evil. So there were just so many good things about the Ephesians. Uh, from in the book of Revelation, but he said something in verse four. He said, but you have left your first love. Mm -hmm. Now, when he's talking about our, his first love, their first love, he's talking about what is our first love? Our first love is loving Christ. And mm -hmm. so they had gotten away from that. So what I want you to see here is that all of the good works, all of the religious mm -hmm. works, all of the activities we're involved in in our local uh, congregation, they don't, they don't take the place, take the place of loving Christ. Amen, amen. Th this is, loving Christ, see, is a fundamental, it's a fundamental principle for Christians, all Christians. We, we love Christ. That's the thing we've got in common that we come to love Christ. And he said that this congregation, which had such a great reputation of love, uh, he said, you've fallen from it. Fallen. Now, isn't that interesting? Uh, it wasn't like they had backslidden. They weren't sinning. Uh, they hated evil, but they were not proactive in their love for Jesus Christ. And the love that he's talking about here is an active love. There are actions associated and so he said, you have fallen. You've fallen a long way. So for a while, you had a great reputation of loving one another, loving all saints. And now you have fallen uh, to, an, to a lower level, and, and you're not at that level of love, and you need to repent. The first thing was repent. Well, what is repent? That's turn uh, and go another way. You've been going away from God in this regard, but now repent, turn around, confess your faults, and confess your sins, you'll be healed, uh, James mm -hmm. said, so we need to be pursuing love, but he says, not in words and deeds, but in actions, mm -hmm. and, and so it's going to take some actions, and so that's what we're going to be talking about today, what kind of actions are involved in first love, we're going back to our first love, returning, well, returning uh, uh, repenting then talks about changing our mind, uh, changing the way we're thinking. Uh, mm. We need to renew our mind 
and, and it takes it by the Spirit of God and the Word of God will renew our mind. We have, we've been thinking the wrong way. And, and we could be thinking with our uh, mind, and we could be uh, even confessing that we love Jesus uh, with our words, mm -hmm. but he said that's not enough. There has to be some action behind it. That's what 1 John 3.18 uh, talks about, 1 John 3.18. It, it said that we need to not in word and deed, don't love. If you love, it's not just in words, it's not in lip service, but this, it's actual actions. There has to be some actions. Mm. Now, it, and so how are we going to show our first love? How, how are we going to love Christ? There has to be some actions with it. It's not just, well, I, I trust in my heart that I'm a Christian. I trust in my heart I love Jesus. Mm -hmm. uh, and I even speak to my uh, family and friends and say I'm a Christian. But that's not expressing the first love because there are actions. If you love, there are actions associated with it. Now, the Ephesians, see, from Revelation, those first five verses of uh, chapter 2, uh, talks about they were doing a lot of religious things. They, were, mm -hmm. they had a lot of good things going on for them. And that's what Jesus commended them for to begin with. He said, you're doing a lot of uh, activities. You have a lot of activities, and there's a lot of opposition against you, but you persevered. Uh, and, and so you've labored and you've uh, and, and you've worked hard at all of this. And so they had what they what happened to them. They got into religious routines and they started Ooh. doing these things mm -hmm. on a mm -hmm. on a routine basis. Well, oh, okay. We go to a service weekly. We 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 mm -hmm. sing so many songs. Mm -hmm. we, uh, uh, three read. fast songs, three slow songs. We we, we uh, hear the word of God. We hear the scripture read. So so they had gotten into a uh, habit uh, of doing religious things, but they were not expressing their love for Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Now, they may have been feeding the poor. They may have been uh, helping uh, one another. They may have done, it doesn't say exactly what those deeds were, but I know they were, in their mind, they were okay. They were uh, mm -hmm. doing everything just right because this is what they had learned to do, what their elders had, had taught them to do. They were doing it. But Jesus said, you fallen. You have fallen. Oh, you had a love that had a great reputation all around. People knew about your love, but you have fallen away from that. And you may still think in your heart you love Christ. You may still confess you have love Christ. But he said, you have fallen away from that because it's not just in the words. It's not in the deeds. It's not in the, in the thinking that you have mm -hmm. Christ. It is in actions and, and show you how you love Christ. Now, let, let's think about there's a difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. Uh, in the Old Testament, and I just want to talk about holiness for a moment, but it applies to, to uh, love as well. Uh, he said in Leviticus chapter 11, he lists all of these rules about, about being clean and staying clean and eating the right foods and doing all of these things, rules and regulations. And then he gets down close to the end of chapter 11 of Leviticus and says, uh, be holy as, as I am holy. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. you would think then that within the law, uh, if we do all of the rules and all the regulations, we go to all the services and every time the doors open, we go and do all of those things. He said, be holy as I'm holy. But no one could keep the old covenant mm. except Jesus Christ. Uh, we couldn't keep it. And so we really couldn't have that type of holiness uh, because that was all by works. It was all on the outside. Mm -hmm. But now fast forward to the New Testament, the new covenant, and that things are done by grace. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So we see in 1 Peter 1, 16, again, he says, be holy as I am holy. 
But what's interesting about it, he doesn't say any rules or regulations. There are no rules or regulations about being holy. It's just be holy as I'm holy. And, and the way we are holy is that if Jesus Christ lives his holiness through you, oh, then you God. are holy. It's not about rules and regulations. It's not about how many times you go to uh, church services, how many uh, good activities you do, how you help the poor, how you feed the poor, how, how many you, committees, how you're many on. committees you're on. It has nothing to do with that. It's all about grace because under the New Testament, we're under grace. And, and so we have crucified. We've been crucified mm, in Christ, Christ, yet Christ lives through us. Mm. And so when you let Christ live through you, you are holy. Well, it's the same way about love. You've got to, uh, under the old covenant, uh, it said that the law that we fulfill the law with love, mm -hmm. uh, the first commandment was to love the Lord, the second commandment was like it, to love our neighbor, and, and then uh, Galatians uh, 5 verse 14 says that the uh, righteous requirement of the law uh, is fulfilled with love, and so we have to love. Mm -hmm. Now, where does love come from? Well, in the New Testament, love comes from the Holy Spirit depositing love in our hearts. Mm, so we have to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Let him deposit love in our heart, and then we act on it. It's not just words. It's not deeds. You can't put a, a certificate on your wall and say, I, I walk in love. Uh, yeah. Glory to God. So how do we love Jesus Christ? That's, that's the real issue here. How do we love Jesus Christ? Because Get down to the nitty gritty. <laughs> we're getting down to the nitty gritty. How do we love Jesus Christ? Well, you know, what it says is go back to the beginning. Go back to, to mm -hmm. your first works. Mm -hmm. And let's think mm -hmm. about those first works. Well, the beginning really is talked about in uh, Genesis. Genesis, that's the book of beginnings. And in uh, chapter one, on the sixth day, Jesus created man. I mean, God created man. In the sixth day, God created man. On the seventh day, he ordained rest. So mm. the beginning, thats a, this is the first thing that he oh, ordained wow. in his relationship with uh, people. Uh, his people was rest. And so if we go back to the first works, We've got to come into a rest so that we can hear his voice. I want to talk about it in a practical sense for a moment. I, I'm thinking about a couple, a uh, man and a woman, uh, that were practicing. Uh, you know, I like the word practice because you who practice righteousness are righteous. righteous. You who practice loving Christ, love Christ. So that practicing is really important. And uh, this uh, man and woman I'm talking about, they were learning to uh, love the Lord and to hear from the Lord. And, and so they would have quiet time in the evenings. Each one of them would go to their separate room and have a quiet time uh, before their evening meal. Just a way to practice being close to the Lord, uh, communing with the Lord. And, and so really what to love the Lord Jesus Christ, you need to commune with the Lord. And so you need to be mm -hmm. practicing communing. And so this is a practical way that you could do it. Uh, set aside a, a quiet time so that you could be with the Lord and, and listen to his voice and, and uh, worship him, have communion with him. Um, you know, First John uh, chapter one uh, talks about that our fellowship, our communion, is with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And so if we walk in the light, we will have fellowship one with another. We'll have fellowship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and with other Christians. Now, back to this man and woman, I'm just giving this as a practical example. How can we love Jesus Christ in a practical way Let's spend some time with him and commune with him and listen to him. And, and this particular night that I'm talking about, this man and woman, uh, the man was in a, a room by himself and just uh, listening to the Lord and, 
and wanting to hear the instructions from the Lord. Now, that night he saw himself uh, at a football game, which was going to happen in a few minutes. And he saw that he and his wife had gone to the football game and they set up on the uh, top bleacher in this open uh, stadium. And, uh, and so he went in there and he was excited. He talked to his wife and said, well, I, I've spent this quiet time with the Lord. And what I, what I sense in my spirit is that you and I are supposed to go to this football game tonight. And they didn't have any children playing football. And, and so it, it seemed like a strange thing to do, but he had heard from the Lord and he had seen himself in this football stadium, American football, and uh, for high school. Uh, and, and so just he and his wife had gotten up, gone all the way to the very top bleacher. Okay, so they decided to do that. They had their dinner and then they went off to the ball game. And they went, uh, paid for the ticket and went up into the stadium and went up on the top bleacher. Now, while they were up there and watching the game, the, the man looked around and, and he saw in the distance some woods because he was up high. And he saw a truck that had been hidden in the trees uh, a distance away uh, at, at a place where people normally wouldn't see it. But because he was... Uh, on the top bleacher, he could see that truck. Now, the interesting thing about the truck is that that truck belonged to a friend of his, and it had been stolen, and it was being hidden in these trees, and the only way that you could see it was from the perch where he had up at the top, mm -hmm. and so uh, after the game, he called his, or maybe during the game, but he called his friend, and they sent the police out there, and, and they regained the truck and that's the only place you could have seen the truck was from that top bleacher in the stadium and I just use that as a practical example of people wanting to hear the Lord wanting to express their love to the Lord and spending some time with him because that's what it's about going back to the first love we need to spend some quality time with Jesus and you can decide when you want to do that. But all of the uh, church activities, all of the religious activities, all the other things you do, do not substitute for time with the Lord Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. See, the first love, that's love, and that's loving Christ. And if we don't love Christ, because it says if we draw near him, he'll draw near us. That's what, what the scripture mm -hmm. says. Mm -hmm. And so we love him. He loves us. He deposits love in us by the Holy Spirit and it comes into the heart. Now, loving, our first love, loving Christ, is not a matter of activities. It's not a, a matter of events. It's not a matter of habits, uh, or, or, habits or religious activity. It's actually communing. Uh, with him because Jesus, I mean, the, the Lord said in uh, 1 Samuel 16, verse 7, he said, God does not look as man looks, doesn't look mm -hmm. at outward mm -hmm. appearances. See, man, mortal man looks at outward, outward appearance. appearances. Um, the prophet Samuel was uh, wanted to uh, anoint a new king over Israel, and he was looking for a good looking handsome young man that was tall and that lots stood. of muscles yeah and, and just really a handsome young man that's what he is looking for uh, but God said that's not the people I have chosen I have chosen David mm -hmm. because I look at the heart I know what's going on in the heart yeah, so when you love Jesus Christ it's really an attitude of the heart your first love and so what what Jesus was writing see this is Jesus writing in Revelation chapter two, those first five verses that I'm covering tonight. This is Jesus himself, and he's dictating it to uh, John uh, to write this letter and to send it to the Ephesians uh, that they had gotten away from their first love, and it, you need to do the works of the first love, and that's mm -hmm. really mm -hmm. communing mm -hmm. with uh, Jesus, and, and he says there in the fifth verse, 
if you don't do this, if you don't repent, mm. whoo, no how far you've fallen. Oh, dear Jesus. If you don't repent, I'm going to take the light Oh, out. he's going to take the light away. You're going to walk in mm, darkness. darkness. See, but John wrote in uh, 1 John uh, 1 that if we walk in the light, light as he is in the light, we will have fellowship. We will have communion one with another. We'll have, and, and our communion, our fellowship is with the Father and with, with the, the Son, Son, Jesus Christ. And with the Holy Spirit. And with the Holy Spirit and with other people. So if we're going to walk in the light, we have to be communing and commune with other believers and you'll be communing with the Christ within them. You'll be communing with the Christ within them. And that's what we're doing tonight. I mean, we're communing with you. You know, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. And so when we see your face and when we see you, then we know that we're, we're, we're communing one with the other. Hallelujah. It's really important that all of our activities, all of our religious activities do not substitute for a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That, that all of these other activities that we could do, and I'm sure many of you are involved in uh, such activities, they don't take the place of your spending time with the Lord Jesus Christ, communing with him, uh, speaking to, and, and I'm really talking about you speaking to him and you listening to him, listen to what he has to say. Mm -hmm. It's at the heart level, commune at the heart level. We have to make a decision. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. See, love is a choice. Yes, it is. Love is not a feeling. Uh, there's some people you may not feel like loving, mm -hmm. but nonetheless, you can make a choice to love them. Well, it's the same thing for Jesus. You can make a choice to love him and you're then you express that love there is a demonstration of that love there is practicing that love it's not just something well 20 years ago i i came down to the front of the church and mm -hmm. i told everybody i love jesus well that's not what i'm talking about today i'm not talking about something you did 20 years ago i'm talking about today yeah. what are you doing today what am i doing today now the reason uh, that I want to cover this message is that I myself want a stronger relationship with Jesus Christ. And, and I, I was, I believe the Lord spoke to me about first love and, and I knew I needed to practice first love. I needed to be active uh, in demonstrating my love for Jesus. And so I've been exploring this and I've been praying and seeking the Lord. See, once you, this, this concept is about a fire within you, Hallelujah. about passion within you. Uh, and some people have abandoned their fire and their passion for Jesus Christ. Oh, I they, they still I are involved in religious activities. They still go. Uh, to the services and they still serve on committees and they still do lots of activities but they've lost the fire this is about a fire mm -hmm. being on fire inside in your heart for Jesus it's a choice I, I'm on fire you know uh, Paul wrote Timothy he said stir up that fire within yes you. amen you, amen you've, got, you've had a fire but the fire uh, has been almost going out but stir it up it's, hallelujah it, it's, it hasn't completely left well this is true for all of us we need to stir up the fire it's our responsibility to stir up the fire we, we can't depend on jesus christ we can't depend on our pastor to stir up the fire within us that's a a responsibility we have to stir up a fire of love for jesus christ you know, he paid it all. He he shed mm -hmm. his precious blood for you and for me. He shed it all on the cross. He gave up his life. He laid down his life. They didn't take his life away from him. He, he gave it up it down. for you and for me and, and for the world. He, oh, he died on the cross. He went there. 
uh, and died on the cross in such a horrific uh, death that he suffered. He suffered so much, and he did it for you and for me. He gladly did it. He said, for the joy set before, before him. him, he endured the cross. So it was mm -hmm. that joy, and, and, and the joy that he saw was you and me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Loving Hallelujah. him. Oh. Becoming a member of his family. Loving him. Loving him. Not not in our words, not in uh, our lip service. I'm not talking about lip service. I was saying, oh, I, I'm a Christian and I love Jesus. I'm not talking about lip service. I'm talking about something that's a reality of the action and the truth of my loving Jesus and your action and your truth. And I'm talking about have it line up with the word of God. Act in action and uh, consistent and according to the truth, loving Jesus with a fire, with a passion. A lot of people have abandoned the passion. They're still, they've grown weary and well, uh, yeah. and well and doing, doing because they've done a lot of good things. They keep doing good things and they're over and over and there's no end to it. And, and there's no, they have no fire. They have no passion for what they're doing because they're growing weary, because they haven't made a choice and stirred up a fire within them for Jesus, because that's what the first love is. You, you've had the first love. Now, we all need to make sure that we have a fire burning inside of us for the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being here tonight, and I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Thank you. I want to just add to uh, this message by, by saying that as we think about the Lord, as we think about the word, uh, as we meditate upon the word, I believe that's a way that we show Jesus that we are returning to our first love. And I believe that that's what stirs us up. I don't know about you, but if I, some, there are verses that I read that stir me up. And of course, the, the verse that the Lord gave me when, when I was going through the, the cancer, uh, terminal cancer situation, uh, Psalms 118, verse 17, you will not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. That, that fired me up, that, that, that excited me and, and, and gave me hope and it gave me courage and, and it gave me um, the, the strength uh, to to go forth and fight the good fight of faith. I believe that as we get, uh, as we think on the word of God and we meditate on the word of God, uh, then, then that is showing Jesus that we love him. And Brother Fred is, is talking about showing our love with action. And I believe that that is another way uh, that we can show him that we love him is, you know, number one is communing with him and and talking to him and letting him talk to us, but then also just thinking, thinking on the word. And you can do that at work. You can do that when you're driving down the road. You can do that uh, when you're in your home, uh, cooking your meals or whatever. Uh, you know, you can, you can think on the Lord. You can think on those, those scriptures that he gives you. And, and when you do that, then you're, you're actually demonstrating that you love him and uh and of course he uh jesus you know talked to peter about this you know you know he said um well you go ahead and and what's the first one jesus said to peter okay um see if you have a passion for jesus christ your passion will bring forth a focus and on mm -hmm. what what your what's important in your life, and then you can set priorities. Oh, that's so it's good. That's passion, good. That's passion good. first, and that'll establish a focus. What you're focused on, and then you can set priorities. Mm -hmm. Now, see Jesus in uh, uh, John chapter 21 after his resurrection. He came back and he was speaking to Peter, and he said, "Peter, do you love me?" And uh, so he he's really talking about this passionate love, this mm -hmm. agape love. Mm -hmm. You do you love me? Do, do you really love me? If you love me, Peter, then I'm going to set some priorities. And these, you'll want to follow these priorities. Mm -hmm. You'll feed my lambs. Mm -hmm. You'll feed my, my sheep. sheep. 
You'll shepherd my sheep. So you've got to have that passionate love for Jesus Christ, and that will give you a focus. And within that focus, you'll be able to set priorities on what is important. And, and see, Jesus set those priorities. Once he, once he uh, looked into Peter's heart, saw that he loved him, that he truly loved Jesus, he said, these are the priorities. You feed my lambs. You feed my sheep. You shepherd, mm -hmm. take care of my mm -hmm. sheep. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And I believe that as we, we ask the Lord, you know, what do you want us to do? Uh, help us to focus, help us to set our priorities. And, uh, you know, I had this conversation with a young man uh, about two weeks ago. I said, he said, he's a minister of the Lord and he's under our covering. And I told him, I said, you need to set some priorities. And in many times in ministry, the, the ministry takes, takes over. It takes over the time, takes over um, the, the life of that person. And so I told him, I said, the number one priority is your relationship with, with the Lord. And, you know, keep that strong. Keep it uh, uh, so that, that, that he knows that you, that you love him. And number two is, uh, and this person is married, number two priority is your wife. Number three priority is your children. Number four priority is your work. Number And then the ministry. The ministry comes down the line. But there are so many ministers uh, that they say they love Jesus, but they, they don't spend any time with their wife. They don't spend time with their children. They, you know, it's, it's a, they don't spend time with the Lord. And it's all about ministry it's all about preaching all of preaching here and preaching there and and oh i'm going to do this and i'm going to do that for the lord but but the lord has priorities and uh and so when we come together with him to commune with him he'll help us to focus on what we need to be doing in our lives and uh and i think that's um uh, you know some of this we've learned the hard way, you know, some of this, you know, uh, uh, you know, our children, um, you know, have, have said to us, you know, well, you know, you, uh, you liked going out there and preaching to the alcoholics more than, than, than you did about me. And so we've had to repent. We've had to repent and return to our first love. And our first love is the love that we have for Jesus Christ and what he did for us on the cross and what he's still doing for us. He's still doing miracles for us. You know, and so I'm going to open it up here in just a moment. Uh, but when Brother Fred came to me and he said, I feel like I'm supposed to teach on returning to your first love. I mean, my heart began to leap and and right then, you know, I began to repent, Lord, you know, if I've put anything before you, anything before you, did you know that religious activities uh, are idols? You know, they are idols and they are, they take the place of, of real fellowship with the Lord. And, um, and I know, and I came out of a religious background, uh, Brother Fred and I both did. and and. There was so much religion there. And I've asked the Lord, you know, Lord, if you see any more religion in me, burn it out, get it out because it hinders the, the ministry of the kingdom. It hinders uh, people being healed and saved and delivered and, and miracles happening, you know, that religion does. And so I constantly uh, have to, you know, go back to the Lord and say, Lord, you know, was that something religious that I just said? Or was that something religious that I just did? Then burn it out of me. Get it out of me. And um, and let me, you know, do things your way. And um, See, this message is about the simplicity of devotion to Christ. And we all need to, to 
like Sherry said, get rid of these other things, these trappings that look mm -hmm. uh, religious. And, and our focus should be on the simplicity of communing with Jesus Christ, a simplicity of devotion to Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm just going to give one personal example, and then, then uh, we'd love to hear your comments about this message. Uh, but we were, uh, we had opened up the mission downtown Athens, and there was a young couple that came to be with us and to learn from us, and they were um, a wonderful couple. And um, and so we said, well, you can come because we have lots of children that are coming. Uh, will you take care of the children and teach the children uh, on Sunday mornings? And they said that they would. And so they were they were doing that. And then all of a sudden, one Sunday, they didn't show up. And and I got very irritated about that. I thought, well, you know, this is unfaithfulness. This is, you know, they're not doing their job. And um and, and, and so after the service was over with, well, somebody else had to take over and with the Who children. And, um, and so I called this person uh, the next day and I said, you know, y'all didn't come. You didn't take care of the children. And the, the, the wife said, well, we were on our way to, to church and we, there was a couple that were having problems with their vehicle and then when we stopped, we realized that they were having problems otherwise, too. And we stopped to pray with them and help them uh, with their vehicle and help them with their with their problems. And we prayed with them. And I thought to myself. This is something that was in me that was in me and it was a religious mindset that I had and the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said I'm going to use this couple in my kingdom do you want to be a part of that or do you want to be left out of that and I said Lord I want to be a part of that of what that couple is going to do for you and and I repent of that religious thinking that they had to show up and take care of the children. They were doing kingdom work. They stopped to help someone just like the Good Samaritan. And so I repent. Um, you know, I repented right then and there. And so this is how I want us to, to just begin our conversation and your comments. And let's just, uh, uh, let's just repent together. Let's just say, Father, Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I repent, I repent of any religious thinking, of any religious thinking, of any religious activities, of any religious activities that have taken the place, that have taken the place of you, of you in my life, in my life. And I say that I love you. And I say that I love you. And I will act upon that. And I will act upon that. In the days to come. In the days to come. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For salvation. For salvation. For healing. For healing. For redemption. For redemption. For deliverance. For deliverance. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen.